Thank you for coming, everybody. I'm going to call this uh, meeting to order Wednesday, September 6th for the License Commission. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Jennifer Ewers, and Helen Kahn. And as a reminder, this uh, Zoom meeting is being recorded. Do we have anybody here for public comment? You could raise your Zoom hand. No, I'm not seeing any public comment. We can jump right into the agenda. First up, we have applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music, 274 Main Street. This is a wine and malt license and a fee waiver has been requested. And do we have someone new here from the Academy? Hi. Oh, do we? Yes, we do. Melissa's not here. Oh, that's right. Um, Hello. Hi. How are you? Great. Welcome to License Commission. Thanks. Are you um, new at the Academy or are you? What, I've been with the Academy for about a decade and I'm just covering oh. for Melissa while she's out for a couple of months in this position. Oh, how exciting. Well, thank you for coming. We Thanks. can do this with you today. Wonderful. Um, so this agenda item is for the following. Saturday, September 23rd, 7 to 11 p.m., Bob Marley, King of Comedy. Friday, September 29th, 7 to 11 p.m., Margot Price. October 4th, 7 to 11 p.m., David Sedaris. October 6th, 7 to 11 p.m., Almost Queen. October 8th, 7 to 11, David Cross. And October 13th from 7 to 11 for The Machine. And all documents are submitted. Is anything happening differently at any of these evenings? Nope, that's all perfect. Okay. Can Does I, anybody can have I any get a, a name? Oh, sorry. sorry, can I just get a name for the record? Is it Nikki? Yeah, legal name is Nicole Beck. Any questions for Nikki from the commission? No. Nope. No, no questions. Thank you. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses along with the fee waiver as detailed in item three on the agenda. I second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. You're all set, Nikki. Thank you so much. Thank you. Item number four. We have an application for a new automatic amusement device license for Room Mang LLC DBA Absolute Zero at 229 Main Street. And the request is for two prize crane claw machines. Do we have somebody here from Absolute Zero? I am not seeing anybody. Okay. Um, Move on until they join us. Okay. All right. Item number five, application for a short-term liquor license for the Downtown Northampton Association for Saturday, September 9th, 12 to 8 p.m. This is for the Taste of Northampton located on Main Street from the Rainbow Crosswalk to King Street. This is a wine and malt license and there's a requested fee waiver. And do we have somebody? Hello. Peter Hamlin. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Nice to meet you. Um, so this is the second year, second of, year on Main of the Street. return. Yeah. And did you work with the event last year? I did not know. Okay. Uh, no. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your setup for the wine and beer and where, how it's all going to be managed? Yeah. So the event takes place from the rainbow crosswalk to the crosswalk at King street and pleasant. Um, and we have about 32 local businesses that are going to be vending on the street. Uh, the hours of operation is 12 to 8, though we will, by our, by our li liability uh, insurance, will stop alcohol sales at 7 p.m. Okay. Uh, the current uh, people that will be serving is Building 8, uh, Drawing Board, Mineral Hills uh, Artifact, and Progression brewing and they'll all be centrally, lo centrally located in the middle of the festival. Okay. Is the area going to be cordoned off? Where uh, they be serving? No, no. Okay. No. Okay. And do you know, I wasn't able to make it last year, so I don't really recall. Jennifer and Helen might have 
or Helen might have been there, but I don't yep, recall. I went last year. Was was there a wristband process? What was the? Yes, we'll have a we'll have a we'll also have a central tent that will have IDing and wristbanding of people over twenty one. Great. Okay. So like last year in that regard. Yep. Okay. So people can get a beer and walk around and go get food at different tents and things like that. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, Helen and Jennifer, questions, comments. Has the liquor liability been obtained and and sent over to Annie? Uh, it has been obtained. Um, uh, Will and Insurance is our local uh, vendor, and they are in the process of pulling the the binder together and going to have it to Annie by hopefully tomorrow is, is the goal. Yeah. Um, Helen, anything? No, beyond that, I mean, I don't think there were any issues knocking wood last year. So um, hopefully that'll be the same this year. Hopefully the yeah. weather will hold for us as well. Right. <laughs> I'm hopeful. Yeah. Um, Annie, we can do this contingent on receiving the liability paperwork? Yeah, yeah okay. it's fine. Great. I have no further questions. Did you want to add anything, Peter? No, uh, just we're really exciting. Uh, really excited to have the festival happen and thank the city for the support and yeah everyone's super super excited for it so yeah great um i plan to be there this year so i'm excited to, oh, to make it great. Great. um would somebody like to make a motion then sure, um, i'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for the downtown northampton association uh with the fee waiver contingent upon receiving the liquor liability um as detailed in item five on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. All set then. Thank you so much for coming. See you Saturday. See ya. <laughs> item number seven, we have, or I'm sorry, item number six, application for a short-term liquor license for the Forbes Library at 20 West Street on Tuesday, September 12th from 5 to 8 p.m. This is a Hosmer Gallery reception for the artists R. Sanderson J and J. Messer. It's a wine and malt license with a requested fee waiver. Hello. Hi, is my sound okay? Your sound is great. How are okay. you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, my name is Lisa Downing and I'm the director of the Forbes Library and uh, I'm representing this application today. And uh, this is uh, a monthly uh, artist reception on the second floor uh, that we've been doing these for years and we're so happy to have them back now that the pandemic's over. We're especially excited about this one because it's um, the um, Judy Messer's work is photographs of a lot of the book arts culture in the Valley. And Ruth Sanderson is a beloved children's book um, illustrator, and uh, her work will be featured, and a photograph of her will be on the show. So it should be a really good, beautiful show to attend. Lovely. That sounds great. Is anything different the way you're setting it up? Or is the usual? No. The, okay. the usual, yeah. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you have any questions or comments? No, I don't. No, no questions. I'm glad these events are back. Thank you. All right, then. How about a motion? <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short term, short term liquor license for the trustees of Forbes Library, along with a fee waiver as detailed in item six on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Helen? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Jennifer. And Jennifer. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Lisa. All right. We all set to move on then. Item seven, application for short-term liquor license for Pioneer Valley Racing Incorporated, October 15th, 9 to 1 p.m. This is for the seventh annual Happy Valley Half Marathon and 5K taking place at Look Park at 300 North Main Street in Florence. And it is a wine and malt license. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Could you state your name for the record? Justin Killeen. Great. Nice to see you. Um, you wanna? You ran the event last year, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Every year except for the COVID year. So. Okay. Yeah. This is number seven. Yep. 
Great. So want to just let us know a little bit about it. We're familiar with it, but update us. Yeah, same. Nothing's changed. Um, so Look Park, uh, it'll start and end there. And then um, the kind of the after event will take place over by the pedal boat pond area. Yep. Um, so it's a very kind of closed off section. It's got police, EMTs. Uh, this year, the same vendors, there's four. Um, they've all done it in the past. So everyone's mm -hmm. familiar. And then the participants that are 21 and older, they have like a, a tearaway ticket on their running bit. So when they finish, they can choose which vendor they want to go over to and they get one drink and then one food item um, from us. And then they get, you know, get carded and everything at the tables as well. Sure. Okay. Helen and Jennifer. Sounds good to me. Yep, no questions. My son's running. It's a great okay. event. Oh, fun. All right, then a motion. Make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for Pioneer Valley Racing as detailed in item seven on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Item number eight, applications for short-term liquor license for Click Workspace Incorporated at nine and a half Market Street. This is a wine and malt license for Friday, September 29th, seven to 9.30 for the Click Workspace Music Show and Thursday, October 5th from five to seven for the Hampshire County Real Estate Forum, which is what I was asking you about, Annie. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, my name is Mary Yoon, and I am the executive director here at Click Workspace. And uh, the first, we're rebooting our Click Music shows. So okay. we'll have an event on the 29th, and we'll have two bands play. And we'll pretty much have the same setup we have for Arts Night Out now. And um, and we card at the at the bar bar area. Yep. Um, that's pretty much it. And right. then for the fifth is uh, somebody is uh, Peter Irvine, who is the, um, uh, let's see, he's in charge of the for forum. He's an attorney in Northampton and the Hampshire County Bar Association is actually hosting, uh, is sponsoring that. And we're having it in our in our space it's a okay. reception and a panel discussion and there'll be food and and beer and wine yes excellent sounds good are there any questions or comments from jennifer or helen no no questions thank you all right great then how about a motion motion to approve the short-term liquor licenses for click worse work space as detailed in item eight on the agenda Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you so much for coming. And we're excited your music events are happening again. That's fun. We're trying. <laughs> yes. Thank Good for you. you. Thanks. Item number nine, application for a transfer for a common big store license, transfer from Maura Glennon DBA Florence Pie Bar, transferring to the Florence Pie Bar LLC at 17A Main Street in Florence. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, I am Danny McColgan. Uh, I suppose now representing for the first time, uh, Florence Pie Bar LLC. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> That was really fun news to see in the paper. Yeah, we're we were really excited to finally be able to you know talk about it. Um, yeah, it's been in the works for a while, but you all know how that kind of stuff goes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anything that you want to share with us is it here as you're coming out as the new owner of Florence Pie Bar? So many comings out in my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just that we're really. I never you know, imagine it would be pie. <laughs> right, I know. Um, we're we're really excited to um, continue kind of, uh, you know, boosting everything that's going on in uh, Northampton at large. This is going to be our first time really um, ever foraying into Florence. Um, we're so, friendly up here. <laughs> yeah, we're we're excited. Um, I think it's, we've been spending a lot more time up there lately, and oh. I, I think there's. Um, a lot more of a 
um, great little community going on up there. Then folks that spend most of their time downtown yeah. really appreciate. Um, and we want to bring some of that downtown energy back up to downtown Florence, um, yeah. which a lot of people are already doing. And I think it's going to be fun to bring, um, you know, that our, our coffee program and everything up to something that's already providing such a, a great product to Florence. Yeah. Um, I have to, I'm so impressed with everything you've done at Familiars and the entire Summer on Strong experience is like my whole office. We meet there for coffee once a week. It's just, it's really such an awesome addition to downtown Northampton. So thank you so much for that. And congratulations on that success. And thank you, thank you so much. Totally, totally, totally thrilled for everybody involved that um, you'll be bringing some of that same energy to Florence. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really jazzed. We're happy that, um, you know, the whole team there is staying on. Um, and I think it's just gonna be a really great continuation um, with some kind of fun uh, refreshing and energy. Um, I think that that's like our, our big thing that we want people to focus on is that the pie is staying. <laughs> we're not changing any recipes. We're not yeah. even changing any bakers or anything, so. Great. Um, Helen and Jennifer, questions or comments? Yeah, just congratulations. And I think any effort to bridge the two downtowns, uh, you know, is welcome. So so that's great. Um, you know, there'll be some people who want to fight it, but I think it'll be great to sort of, you know, when I had a, had a place in Florence, it felt very separate than um, downtown Northampton. And often people forgot about Florence. So I think it's great that there's an owner in both locations now. Yeah, we're, we're, we're jazzed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I think your energy will be great there. Just um, it has such good bones and structure. And just uh, to give that little energy boost, Danny, I just think is is the perfect recipe. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's great to see you here instead of on Strong Avenue, Jennifer. <laughs> That's right. I spent a lot of time on Strong Avenue. Yeah, I'm a super fan. But it's like Natasha said, I mean, it's such a community gem. I think it's really the best thing that's happened in Northampton in a long time. It's it's a real treasure thank and you're you. part of it. So thank you. Yes, yeah. you're, you've executed that whole thing so perfectly. It's just great. I think the community forgets, right? We appear and, and you know, all the seats are available and the umbrellas are up and the planters are there. And, and I think we need to kind of put our event hat on sometimes and realize how much work and permitting and um, and the teams and the volunteers and and thank you. And you do need butts and seats. I mean, as a community member, right? I take that job very seriously. But um, on the flip side, all the planning, all the work that goes unrecognized, I, I do want you to know we see you, we see that. And Annie too, in the mayor's office and there's a lot to it. Absolutely, but without those butts in the seats, they might just get up and float away. So <laughs> we definitely need those. <laughs> Our part. Okay, um, then how about a motion? All right, I'll make a motion to approve the transfer of the common victualler license from Maura Glennon, DBA Florence Pie Bar to Florence Pie Bar, LLC. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you I so know. much. You're welcome. Item number 10, applications for short-term liquor licenses, building eight brewing for wine and malt on September, Saturday, September 17th from 12 to three for the Florence Civic and Business Association Chicken Barbecue at 90 Park Street in Florence, September 30th from 12 to 8 p.m. for the annual Oktoberfest celebration at 320 Riverside Drive in Florence and Saturday, October 14th from 12 to 8 p.m. for a full pour Saturday at 320 Riverside Drive. And O'Brien, you're here. Yes, I am. How are you? Good, representing Bay State Village, the almost forgotten part of Florence. <laughs> Never forget. Even yeah, more. You're bringing it back, that. O'Brien. We won't forget yeah. it. Right, right. <laughs> no, I'm doing um, good. It could be hotter, though. I'm a little disappointed. I know. I'm sorry. We can't help you with that. <laughs> yeah, so, we're trying to wilt the kids in the school system right now. Right. And it's awful. Yeah. Um, okay, so all these these are all events you've done in the past, yes. Um, except for the uh, the chicken okay. one, I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, uh, okay. The uh, the downtown Florence Civic and Business Association approached me. They're trying to 
do a little bit better with involving a little bit bigger demographic other than kind of the over 40, 50 crowd for this thing, yeah. um, which I was uh, very much in support of, uh, although I was pretty much a stickler about what kind of parameters I wanted to see. So we are going to be fencing around a tented area where I'll be selling in the tented area. Um, and and uh, right now, I think they've sold about 100 tickets. Uh, I think they're looking at maybe another 50% of that when it's all said and done um i'm serving cans uh, and i'm gonna sell water too and maybe some you know sodas and stuff i haven't really cleared the soda thing with them um but everybody gets you know um, uh, the other thing i was glad to see is that you know part of the deal that it's a ticketed event and your ticket includes chicken baked potato corn and i think a dessert so everybody's going to be eating um you know, I'm not serving anything high test and I think it's going to be, you know, a pretty receptive crowd and, and just sort of adding on a little bit to it. Um, so hopefully it works out. I mean, it's middle of the afternoon. I don't think there should be any trouble or anything. I just see think it's a nice addition. I'm bringing some of our lager and IPA, nothing high test. So it'll be uh, hopefully well received and, uh, you know, Hopefully people will like it and not just be looking for a Miller Lite or something, you know, and, uh, but I'm glad to be included. Anything I can do, they were very receptive and very uh, gracious about inviting me. And, uh, and um, I did explain what parameters I'd like to see pretty clearly. I'm supplying the fencing and everything because uh, I have a, it was gifted from Amazon instead of a part. I got about 300 feet of snow fencing during COVID. So I have all the gear and everything. So uh, hopefully uh, it'll be a good thing. And uh you know, um, you know, maybe I'll make a little bit of money. If not, I just happy to support sort of the civic association, you know, and then yep. the other stuff at building eight is status quo. Yep. So it, I, I think it's exciting and fun that they, um, you're going to be working with them on the barbecue and you're the gold. I tell everybody if they'll listen, you're the gold standard on doing these types of events and offsites Thank and everything. You. So I appreciate your efforts in making it a, a little bit tighter in terms of the beer service. And uh, by the way, just on a little note, I did do a food event at Bombix with uh, Robert Johnson's half-sister last Saturday, and I sold wow. uh, 70, 72 uh, plates nice. and uh, sit-down family style, and we're hoping to revisit it in the middle of November with a recreation of an 1873 menu wow. and uh, a performance that they found a program of in the basement, and on the back it said, Join us at Ye Old Tavern on the main road to Williamsburg for pork and beans and rye bread. I'm going to huh. go a little bit more than that, but uh, still, it was. Uh, it, it should be some kind of fun. No, I mean, no alcohol involved, but still just, uh, you know, another thing that's kind of happening in Florence that I thought was really, really interesting. You know, basically the beginning of farm to table is 1873 Ooh. cooking. So it's Maybe. either boiled or roasted is from what I've been reading. So <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that. Excellent. Not quite the same as the Sierra Grill, O'Brien, but we're happy no. to hear that you'll be serving. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, It was an effort. I did it all by myself, too. Wow. Prep 75 yeah. dinners. <laughs> yes, yeah, wow. uh, three proteins and seven side dishes. Wow. You're not yeah. rest, getting rusty without the restaurant. No, it was, it was no, no joke. But anyway, I'll let you move on. Uh, is there a motion then for O'Brien's licenses? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor licenses for building a brewing as detailed in item 10 on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, O'Brien. All right. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. All right. Item number 11, application for a pledge of collateral on an annual all alcohol package store license, Oxbow Wines, LLC, DBA provisions, pledge of license to Florence Bank. Hello. Can you state your name for the record? Hold on, I'm, okay. Uh, legal name is Andrew Bruce McCamus. How are you, Bruce? Good, thanks. How are you doing, Natasha? I'm good, thank you. So want to fill us in on what you're up to? Um, so this is just tidying up um, a, a, a loan agreement that, you know, was funded um, some time ago. And we've just been a little, um, frankly, a little remiss in getting, getting uh, everything uh, cleaned up. So um, the bank is obviously anxious to have this pledge. And, um, uh, and so, you know, we're just 
uh, being cooperative. Uh, okay. as, <laughs> as, as, as we're as we're obligated to be. But um, but I mean, there's so there's I, I think this is pretty standard. Um, no big uh, no big surprises yeah. here, you know. Um, um, Helen or Jennifer, any questions for Bruce? No, no. no. Pretty boring stuff. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a long application. I, yep. I, yeah, I, I wish I had something more exciting to talk about. But... <laughs> we'll take it. Um, okay. Is there anything else that you wanted to add before we go to the motion? No, I, I don't think so. I think I, I, I believe uh, Annie can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe all the paperwork has been submitted. Um, yes, yep. it has. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep, I will send it to the ABCC tomorrow. Okay, and that includes, I think, even that includes the twenty-five dollar fee to the city. Yes, I got that in the mail. I think today. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. All right. And who would like to make the motion? Do it. I'll make. Helen. A okay, you ready? Is I'm going a... to make a motion to approve the pledge of collateral on an annual all alcohol package store license for provisions as detailed in agenda item number 11. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks very much. Yeah. Have a great evening. You too. Take care. All right, next up we have item 12, application for a short-term liquor license to be added to the 2022-23 Arts Night Out group license for Assemble LLC DBA Assemble Made and Curated uh, for the second Friday of the month until December 8th, 2023 from 5 to 8 p.m. This is for Arts Night Out and we have a, a wine and malt license. Yes, hi, how's everybody doing? Good, how are you? It's good to see you under a new hat, other than my Sylvester's and Roberto's hat. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your Thank new you. role. Thank you. It's exciting. Um, it's exciting. Yeah, a lot of pieces to pull together, a lot of people to meet and talk to, but it's been really fun so far. And um, thank you so much for um, being accommodating on the taste. So that's the big haul till Saturday and then the rest will come hopefully <laughs> following that. So, yeah. You just state your name for the record. Sure. Jillian Duclos from the Downtown Northampton Association. Thank you. So you are here today to add um, Assemble to Arts Night Out. Yeah. So they're in their new location. And um, in talking to Justin in my new role, he really wants to be able to participate in Arts Night Out. Um, and he uh, wants to be able to you know, provide wine um, if folks want to come in during, you know, all of the art that he'll be showcasing on those Fridays following till the end of the year. And he's, he has experience doing it because he did it in Thorns. So yes. So now he's under his own. He wasn't, you know, so we figured it all yeah. out. Where I am. So <laughs> nice. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you have any questions for Jillian or comments? No. Assemble no, but welcome. Space, Congratulations, so. Jillian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be seeing lots of me. So I yes, will be looking yeah. really <laughs> forward to it. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you all for all that you do and um, for squeezing me in on the agenda. So. Oh, of course. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm glad we were able to. Um, would somebody like to make a motion? Go for it, Jennifer. Oh, again? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve the short-term liquor license to be added to the 2022-2023 Arts Night Out group license for assemble as detailed in agenda item number 12. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. That was beautiful, by the way, Jennifer. <laughs> well done. I'm the new one here, so, you know, I, I, I get nervous. <laughs> you, did, you did it twice, at least what I saw, so. <laughs> I saw. Thanks, Jillian. <laughs> Thank you. Stay cool out there. Yes, you too. You too. It's, it's real. Oh, okay. <laughs> Item 13, approval of minutes, July 19th and August 2nd. I think I'm I'm only on one of them. Is that correct? Right? Oh, yeah. Actually, right. the August 2nd one. So we should take them separately. Okay. And you should abstain. On the 2nd. Okay. Yes. 
Would someone like to make a motion for the July? That one I can do. I'll make a motion to approve the July 19th, 2023 minutes. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. I think someone else has to make this. And yeah, may I go ahead and, and put forward a motion to approve the minutes for August 2nd, 2023. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Abstain. And Jennifer? Yes. Wonderful. All Perfect. right. Um, something else about minutes? Not about minutes. Okay. Um, new business. Before we jump into this item, I just want to let you know, I have a hard stop today and I apologize for this. I have a work conflict. So I'm going to jump off the meeting at 445. If we're still discussing anything, then Helen can adjourn if that works for Helen. Sure. No problem. Okay, great. Um, sorry. One more thing before we jump yep. into that. The, we have um, agenda item number oh, right. There's four. One oh, right. The um, device. Yeah, no one came. I don't. It, I don't know why. Um, I mean, no. I have no problem going forward and approving this. It's not. It's a machine, and their paperwork submitted. It's a machine, and their paperwork submitted. And I actually think it um, went down to one. Uh, yeah, they only want to do one claw machine versus the two originally requested. Okay. So it's so it's only one. Yeah. Okay. Um, are the other commissioners okay with approving this without having somebody present? Yeah. Yes. I'm that. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the new automatic amusement device license um for one prize crane claw machine as detailed in item four on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. What a year. It's our second prize claw machine <laughs> device license. Yeah, you know what? You know what's happening? Um, there's a gentleman, his name is um, Eric. He's from Lucky Duck Vending. Um, he's I think he's been going around to businesses in Northampton trying to maybe get them to get automatic amusement devices. Um, I, I don't know if that's for sure, but that's what it seems like. Um, Cause that's, right. that's the individual that's been submitting the applications on their behalf. Like they mm -hmm. fill it out, but he gets it to me and make sure it's on the agenda, so. All right, should we take bets on whether a year from now this will become a controversial topic? <laughs> we don't need more controversy. <laughs> no more, please. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. A year from now, this will be. Oh, yeah, right. I'll put money on that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So let's get on with it because Natasha has to um, <laughs> step off. Okay. The new business. Um. Annie shared Helen's email. Um. With the screenshot of the drink menu at Gombo. Um. It is, you know, we've 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 been through this. We've had this conversation. We came to, um, you know, the the reliance on Attorney Seawald's interpretation of the law and the research we had done way back in time, um, and that was communicated to the owner of Combo, and it was communicated to the owners of the Dirty Truth as well, because it turned out they had also had the Bar Hill Gin and something else. Um, Dirty Truth immediately, to our understanding, removed the items from their shelves and stopped serving those drinks. Gombo has actually done the opposite because I have a picture of their menu from May when we discovered that they were serving, um, they were not in compliance. And their drink menu is like 10 times more not in compliance now than it was in May. And that's a disappointment to see because I know that... Um, you know, if we get these over quota licenses and we have a lottery, we all of the requirements for a lottery, you have to be an existing business. You have to have had a wine and malt license and you have to have been in compliance with your licenses. And I don't know that he 
is misunderstanding the very clear instructions he's been given at this point, or if he is um, just being defiant. Yeah, and can you, I mean, because this is clearly, like, e even, I mean, I don't know if this would mean, even if they were using the core and, and cordials, um, it doesn't have the appearance of that, you know, when you go into the, when you even just looking at this menu, but it's clear that they're, they're using liquor. Um, and there, I, I yeah. recall when Highbrow was doing this and they had, they were calling drinks, martinis and things like that. And the then mayor called the owner out on it and was like, you know, he sent him a screenshot of his martini advertising and like this, yeah. you don't have a liquor license for this. So yeah. So, I mean, I so I'm, sorry. I don't know that we can, I don't know where our responsibility is in terms of what's being misrepresented on the, on the menu for that establishment or any establishment for that matter. I think it's an unfortunate way to communicate to the public what you're serving them rather than celebrate what you're serving them in a really creative way. So people understand what they're drinking and what you're offering. And um, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Um, well, in fairness, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Helen, but I, I did check my, my notes once I saw this, this um, issue came up again. And in fairness to the, the new owner, I do believe he's receiving conflicting advice from the distributor. Without a doubt. But he can't. Yep. But I suppose he's making a choice to follow the distributor's recommendations rather than ours. And that's um, the unfortunate thing is because the, that, yeah. And um, I think, I think that is a problem with the distributors. I think it, you know, it's not just been something he's had to deal with. I think obviously anybody who's able to purchase the Bar Hill gin, that, that anything that doesn't say culture or liqueur. So that's one thing, but um, the, the and, and I know you know this, but I'm just sort of saying this for the record to, this is the licensing authority and to just disregard what has been said is, um, it's just like, I don't, I don't want to waste our time with this. I don't want Annie to have to waste her time sending letters to people. Um, it is what it is. This is how it works. This is what was decided. This, you know, Annie sent John a really clear, um, communication that outlined attorney Seawald's interpretation of several sentences from the, uh, mass general, uh, law. And I don't, I don't know how, you, I don't know how a distributor salesperson is going to trump that but apparently it does or did. Yeah, and just looking at this menu, I mean, this is the menu of someone who holds a liquor license. So at the very least it's deceptive. And then at the at the most, we know that he has just pushed back 100% on everything that's been sent to him, right? He's never conceded and, say, and said, oh, okay, I'll show it to you. This is what it is. He just says, no, what you're telling me is wrong. And you can't tell the license commission that they're wrong. Um, and... You know, I think of this as the perspective from the perspective of someone who does hold a liquor license and sees this menu and sees what he's serving and says, "What? Where is the line there? Because there's no line anymore at, at this point when you're serving this type of stuff." And interestingly, I mean, anecdotally or whatever, you know, I was reading a Mass Live article where they were interviewing people about would they buy Eric Sewer's licenses, and he said, "Yes, I could really use a liquor license," you know, from Gombo, and I'm thinking. He's acting as though he does have a liquor license. So, so anyway, it's it's frustrating at the least. And so, the, I guess the question is, what is our authority, and how do we enforce it? I don't certainly want to, you know, as I was sitting there eating, I was like, the idea of like the cops coming in is terrible, <laughs> you know. But I don't know how this is enforced at this point. Do we know? Do we have a yes? Please, Annie, Mister Zoom hands. Please, Annie. <laughs> um, so he he did send photos of two bottles. Yes, he did. Um, and that was it. So he did he did do that, and I I guess I maybe took that to mean that those are the those that's what he's using because he said he said something about like for gin we're using this. Well, no, because gin I don't know I have to find it, but. He did send a few, but obviously not all. He's, he was being selective. 
he, he was being selected. The way I interpreted that exchange was he sent a picture. It was like, this is what I have. This is what I need, right? And then he sent a, a second bottle as if to be, say, like, just making sure we're clear on what needs to be on the label. If we're just, if we just base all of this exclusively on that alone, all he has to do is look at the labels on his bar. He's going to see he has stuff that's not cordial and not liqueur, and he knows he can't have it. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's what the communication said. It has it to is. have the label. It and was if very not, good. you cannot serve it. Yep. And that's not happening. So, I mean, I, I would, in terms of our authority, what to do, I mean, we've sent him the communication that it has to stop. We've, we've been through that. So, you know, the options are send another communication, like cease and desist, desist that service. Um, immediately or there would be consequences which was that they shouldn't have the license if they can't be in compliance with the license you know or just say you haven't been in compliance we've already done this i mean that's i guess what i'm trying to talk through is we've done that part we've sent the letter we've yeah, I, given the direction and yes it's not being followed. I'm perfectly willing and happy to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that the distributors are getting the the longer conversation with him than we are. Um, but I wouldn't do that again. I give him one more pass on that. I wouldn't do it again. And he needs to understand that he, you know, this, this type of stuff contributes to any conversation about whether or not you, your application could be entered into a lottery for an over quota license. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a given that just because you apply, you can enter into that lottery if that's the way we choose to do it. Right. And I think there does need to be the threat. I mean, the, and it, it needs to, it needs to be stated that we can pull the cordial's license. You're not complying with the cordial's license. We're, we're pulling that portion of your license to make it very clear that you can serve wine and beer and that's it. Um, you know, because obviously he's not responding to anything, but the question is what is, what precedes that? Is it, there was an observer in your shop? Is it here, here we have a copy of your menu. Is it, here's photographs from what is on your shelf and, and they don't comply with, you know, they don't have the liquors or cordials uh, labels on your alcohol. That's an interesting question that like who's how do we ensure compliance it's not our positions to be going out and spot checking restaurants um even though we we're all out in the community we all try and support our local restaurants and we see these things obviously I mean, this is how it came to light i mean it was a friend of mine who told me the first time and helen you went last night and saw it so my daughter um, chose to go that she wanted to go there for her going away dinner and it, and it's fabulous and I'd love to support them it was just very frustrating for me to see this totally frustrating. <laughs> no. so like what is that next what, what does that look like Annie um the police are the commission's enforcement agency like the health department has inspectors building has their inspectors we don't so our our, our enforcement is the police so then I guess so ugly since we've done this, since we've sent, we've communicated with him, communicated with him many times. I had several emails with him explaining our position. Annie's had multiple conversations with him. I think we, the directive has gone into writing probably twice, you know, officially, like you, you said it at least one time, Annie, in writing, and he continued to push back and continued to push back. And then you provided the very clear um message from attorney Seawald, right um yes yeah, so i just found the email so um i said you are required to immediately cease serving business beverages that are not labeled as cordials and or liqueurs or any beverages that do not include paperwork provided by the ttb identifying them as such so yeah so i mean I could send a certified letter, which I feel like holds a little bit more weight than an email. Um, and it could say like, you must cease and desist. And then there's usually a line about 
um, uh, like failure to comply, like the license commission reserves the right to take further action on this license, basically putting it out there that that something something could happen if you don't. Um, so there's that, or I think the police could, I think, I don't, I don't think this has been done before, but at least not in Northampton, but I think they can, they could do an inspection. And we'll see why not. Annie, are you comfortable escalating this or do we, do we get Alan Seawald involved for the next step? I mean, I, um, no, I, I can handle it. Um, it's just a matter of just tell me what you want me to, what you want to be done. I mean, I would if I wouldn't mind having the police do a enforcement check because that's that's not our position to do the enforcement check. So the body that does that, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't want them to do it during open business hours. Um, but I also wouldn't want an appointment to be scheduled because it should be a spot check. So I don't know how I don't know what you guys think about that. Is that something you're saying that has not been done before, Annie? Like I, I just I'm wondering oh. logistically, I'm wondering how that works. Does it because I agree I would not want it to be while people are dining there that the cops Yeah, know. no. Um it hasn't been no. done before only because cordials, this it's really a new thing with yeah. with this pretty much this iteration of the license commission. So um and anybody that we've told to stop has stopped. And it, I think it's been clear that they did. Um, so no, this has not happened, at least in Northampton. But I and I and I'll go, I'll call the chief. But I, I and I I am sure it'll be fine. Um, yeah, can it somehow be outside of business hours or a plain clothes person or something? You know, to to not make um, a stir. And and also just uh, in combination, I. I think the letter can be clear and say this could result in you losing your cordial's license. Yeah, I make it very clear. Yeah, I know I don't have a, a voice, but I I think a letter is probably the next step because the other one was an informal email. Okay. Um. Yeah, and and I, but I, I don't know. I mean, it it. It could go either way. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair um, difference between an email and sending a certified letter. Mm -hmm. Yes, a certified letter, you have to sign for it. And it's, I think, yeah, it's, it definitely holds more weight. So, and maybe in that letter, there could be the language, you know, you are out of compliance if you are yeah. serving these things. Um, actions to be taken, you know, up to and including losing your cordial license entirely, um, impromptu spot checks by the police for enforcement. You know, those those are the realities. Yeah. And just really spell it out. But I have to, I have to jump. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you guys so much. Sorry thank about you, this. Tasha. Thank we'll you, you, Natasha. Bye. Bye. Okay. Alan, the floor is yours. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, yeah, so I agree. I mean, I think that makes sense that the, the, that the next thing is that certified letter with strong language with exactly what Natasha was saying. It could be this. And I think mentioned the, yeah, spot checks by the police. Um, yeah, it's frustrating that it has to come to this level. I don't know why there's right. this battling. Battle. But I do think it's time to call in the inspectors. And if, as Annie described, the police are our inspectors. I mean, if you want me to go there tonight, I can, but I'm not as comfortable. I don't know, like what, what authority, do you know what I mean? Do I just have yeah. my husband like take pictures? Right. It's just a little uncomfortable. Yeah, totally. Cause I still feel like I'm a volunteer, you know, on this commission. I, I'm not out to, I don't know. Yeah. You're stop anyone from doing but, you're, but you also, this board has authority. Authority. It's, an adjudicatory board. So you have that authority to, to reprimand, demand, all those things. Yeah. Um, when do we get our badges? I know, but you say that. So do I wave my arms, right? Do I tap my nose? Like, it's, like I, I hear your words. No, you but I feel like your parking pass. 
No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I think, I think the letter and then maybe in two weeks, we just do a spot check to make sure that he's complied. Maybe not even two weeks, maybe a week. Mm -hmm. And do we notify him of that or not? I mean, I think a spot check, I mean, they don't, the health inspector doesn't say I'm coming by. That's you know. with the fire inspector. Right. So it's just to know that they're in compliance. But as I've said, I mean, like it, like in the least ruffling way possible, just in terms of, you know, I mean, I don't, if, if it is possible to do it before they've opened. And then I guess the question is, what does that do? Like if a police officer goes in, observes these things, do they immediately is it immediate that they say there's no drink service tonight? You know what I mean? Or, or we're no, cordial getting, yeah, or nor cordials at all. Like you're serving just wine and beer. We're confiscating these bottles. How, how does that work? Or is it a report back? And then we say it's been observed. We're taking your license. I think they would, it would be a violation. And then we'd have a violation hearing. Right. Um. So they would they would notify him of the violation before they left and then they'd go back and do a report and i would say i don't know what they would do but i would say there would be no cordial service at the very least that night mm -hmm. um i i don't know they yeah i don't know yeah well the chief could answer that question i mean mm -hmm. does yeah. Do you want that answer, Helen, or do do we? Yeah, I mean, I'd be curious sort of what's the next step. I mean, because, yeah, and I think the officer would have to know what they're doing in there exactly. You know, are they just, you know, observing it? Is it actually like a health inspection where the health inspector comes through and has their clipboard and notes down all the things and says, you know, you have a week to comply with this, this, and this, and we're coming back? Or, you know, they're going to uh, need to have their marching orders as well about what they're what they're observing, what they're taking down, and what and does anything happen immediately, or is it a note of a violation like you're talking about? Okay, I can find out more about that. So, um, but we don't meet until October sixteenth or eighteenth. So, um, right, yeah. I'm gonna send the letter a strongly worded letter mm -hmm. and then if 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 the police are the avenue or the entity to do this which i know they are i just i, I don't know how just the cordial thing is different so i just want to check with with them um so in a week should i a week after receiving it do they, I don't know, you you tell me, I don't, I'm just spitballing. I think so. I would say, especially if there's no response, right? I mean, and I don't know if we only do it if there's no response. I mean, it, because I'm just thinking through, well, no, it should still be checked. I mean, even if he responds and he says, okay, now I get it and I'm taking everything off my shelf, that wasn't there anyway. Um, you know, I guess, I guess it makes sense to still follow up with the spot check especially if we're saying this could happen. You know? okay. Well, I think especially since it has continued to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, but no notification in the letter of a spot check. Just should there be maybe like a um, failure to comply could result in a, com in a spot check or just not yeah. mentioned at all? Um, yeah, I guess I had initially talked about it could result in, you know, uh, uh, canceling your cordials license but I know Natasha said that you can mention could you know the following things could happen um, yeah, I guess if if we say uh, it's gonna happen then he's gonna take them like I, just, I right. want him to do it because that's what he's supposed to do not just in time for the police and then when they leave he puts it back yeah I certainly don't think there should be a specific notice saying that no it's no no gonna happen no. yeah Okay, but I guess well, I yeah. will send a draft before I send it. And then if anyone has comments, just send them to me individually. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. 
okie doke. And can I ask, so with the dirty truth, was the, was he more conciliatory? I mean, it hasn't been this back he and forth. not very happy, um, although he was told at his meeting that the meeting that he was approved cordials for, that they needed to say cordials and liqueurs on the, on the bottle. And in fact, I went back and watched the meeting of John getting his license, and that was never mentioned. Oh. I know Natasha had said it at last meeting, like he knew, we said it at the last meeting, I looked, it was never said, interesting. Um, but it was for the dirty truth. So he, I noticed that his drink menu on the website changed mm -hmm. immediately. Um, and he, he, he wasn't happy, but he, he did it, took care of it. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And that's what should happen. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, all right. So that's where we know what's happening with that, sounds like. Um, I was wondering, will the timing is interesting with um Eric Seward, because we're saying the end of September and now our next meeting will not be until the third week in October. So I guess, is there anything we need to know? Are we just informed? Is that something that you're just going to work with directly with Eric? When yeah, and if so he doesn't I sell for licenses? Well, today I said, <laughs> um, the commission's meeting today, we're not meeting again until mid-October. Right. What, what, what are we, is there supposed to be something on the agenda? He's like, he just said, nope, it's a waiting game. And then on the 29th, if nothing submitted, he's got to return the licenses. He doesn't even have two of them. They're on my desk. Um, he never got them because he doesn't oh. have insurance. Um, and then the alternative would be one of the alternatives to be to open. And the other one is to have paperwork filed for a transfer. So in that case, I would, I would work directly with him. I would obviously let you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna let you know no matter what on the 29th. Right. What has happened, if anything. I think lots of uh, media folks will want to know what happens on the 29th as well. Oh yeah, someone <laughs> called me today saying I didn't see anything on your agenda about Eric. Right. Yep. There's nothing to do at this point, right? Nothing yeah. to do. It's a waiting game. Yep, just waiting. Yep. Uh, um Hoping it's fascinating to me that you that he actually never got the insurance in on two of the licenses and i'm not even going to ask i guess it's like does that mean he even owns those licenses right now you know what i mean i mean it's just interesting it's like he's giving back licenses that he never received two of them i don't know if it's worth discussing but i guess we could yeah um know, but... yeah i mean so he physically can't give back right two of the licenses because there's no insurance on them because there's no operation at right. of the locations. Yeah. Right. Yep. Huh. Okay. Um, all right. So I guess, um, you know, I'll read the papers like everyone else, although no, you will, you will. No, I will update you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's all I have for you. Oh, great. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to be at the event that Natasha's going to. So. Oh, goodness. So yeah. you gotta get out oh, my God. Everyone's partying without me. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, um, motion to adjourn. Yes, motion to adjourn. Great. I second. And Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes.